Our last example here is five, where we have to analyze a lumina skate. Um, here we're going to analyze a graph of r squared equals four cosine two theta. Now we know this is a lumina skate because it tells us in our example, but the other way we can tell this is a lumina skate is because it's the only one with an r squared. R squared, r squared, it's a lumina skate. Um, <clears throat> So we have a lumnus. Wow, that's a little disturbing there. A lumnus gate. And so that means we're going to have a shape that looks a little bit like a, an infinity symbol. Now we do know also, since this is a cosine, that this should be oriented on our x axis. Right, so we should have an infinity going left and right. Now our symmetry is going to be um, on the x-axis because we can reflect it. Um, now our zeros, we're not going to worry so much about our zeros because we're going to be making a table. I don't know if you guys have noticed this yet, but every time you graph one of these functions, um, yeah, we always make the same table every single time. So it's kind of tedious, but in the same way it's kind of nice because you're using the same values every time. But you do have to remember your unit circle. <clears throat> so if you don't remember your unit circle, oh boy, maybe we should have a pop quiz of a unit circle. What do you think, Mackenzie? Yeah. Mm, Michael, what do you think? Sure. Joe, what do you think? Let's do it. Perfect. Joe says yes. So we're doing it. Pop quiz someday. We'll see if you know your circle. Someday. someday maybe Saturday. Um, so let's start plugging these values in. If you plug a zero, two times zero is zero. Cosine of zero is one. One times four is four. So you get r squared equals four, which means r is actually equal to two. So we're going to go out a distance of two. So let's go a half. Each circle, a half, one, one and a half, two. <coughs> Excuse me. This would be a half, one, one and a half, two. So we're going to go to the right, a distance of two. Here's your first dot. So our first dot. Maybe if I can get this to be a different color. There's your first dot. So plug in a pi over six. Two times pi over six, pi over three. Cosine of pi over three is going to end up, oh, sorry, yeah. Cosine of pi over 3 is a 1 half. 4 times a half is 2. So you're going to have r squared equals 2. Well, the square root of 2 as a decimal ends up becoming a 1.4. So if you go in the direction of pi over 6, you're going to go a distance of 1.4. So here's a half, 1, 1 and a half. So just a little bit short of that. And let's get this in a pink. And you're going to get a 1.4 right here. Plug in a pi over 4. 2 times pi over 4 is a pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So if we take 0 times 4, that's 0. Square root of 0 is 0. So you're back to your origin. Right here. So then we get a plug in pi over 3. 2 times pi over 3 is 2 pi over 3. Cosine of 2 pi over 3 is going to be a negative half. So we're going to take a negative half times four and you get negative four well when you take the square root of negative four not quite possible so we can't plug that in um so we actually don't have a value right there so let's plug pi over two in two times pi over two is a pi cosine of pi is a negative one um negative one times four is Nothing, so we don't have anything going up at pi over 2. If you try a 2 pi over 3, plug that in, you get a 4 pi over 3. Cosine of 4 pi over 3 is a negative half. Negative half times 4 gives you negative 4, so er, not going to have something there. Plug in a 3 pi over 4. 2 times 3 pi over 4 is a uh, 3 pi over 2. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, times 4 is 0, so we're going to actually get a 0. So we're going to be at, oh hey, well I know, we're still at 0. Um, if you go in the direction of 3 pi over 4, you're at 0. So then we have 5 pi over 6, and if you plug a 5 pi over 6 in, 5 pi over 6 becomes a 5 pi over 3, 
cosine of 5 pi over 3 is a 1 half. 1 half times 4 is 2. R squared equals 2. You get a 1.4. So if you go in the direction of 5 pi over 6, you should get a 1.4. And if you notice, you have a half, 1, 1.4. If you notice, these two points are symmetrical. If you plug in a pi, you're going to get a 2. So we're going to have a point out here at 2. And because of symmetry, we're going to have a nice little shape where this is going down. And you should have at 7 pi over 6, you should have a 1.4. So your shape is going to kind of look like a circular bow tie is what's going to happen. We all like bow ties because if you go down to 330, you should have a 1.4 here. So you go through there and up. And by using symmetry, you can actually cut out a little bit of your work as long as you know what your shape is. So since I knew my shapes, because I know my chart and my equations, then that helps me figure out the rest of the problem. So you can make your life a little bit easier and shorter. However, don't just plug it into your calculator like some of you cheaters like to do. Um, you're going to have to actually just plug it into your, uh, or you're going to have to make a table and then you can start using symmetry. So I will be grading your final <coughs> your final shape when we do this homework, but you also need to have a table to show you did at least some of the work. So no cheating, cheaters, Klein out.